We have uh, a lot to cover with you today. We have uh, a bunch of uh, uh, really cool guest speakers that are going to bring stories. Um, and uh, we're going to focus today about uh, speech to text and, and speech recognition. Um, so speech to text is part of our conversation group of products in our building blocks as part of Cloud AI. Um, you know, we have a very large portfolio of AI solutions that are, you know, all of them uh, pretty much leading in their space. Uh, so uh, we definitely recommend if you, um, if you have some time to check out some of the other sessions about the other products. Um, a, lot of, a lot of cool stuff being announced um, uh, yesterday and today at Next. Um, so how many people here were at our Google Cloud Next session last year on speech to text? Uh, okay, a few of you. So it's hard to believe, <laughs> but uh, last year when we were here, the product was still in beta. Um, so we actually only announced GA just over a year ago in April 2017. Um, and, uh, you know, long form recognition. Uh, the product has gone through so much since then. Uh, we've added 30 new languages. We're now at 120 languages, you know, mind boggling. Um, uh, and a bunch of other features like, you know, timestamps, like uh, uh, punctuation, um, and, and the new models, which we'll talk about later. Um, there's two main use cases that we address, uh, speech for human-computer interaction and speech analytics. Human-computer interaction is typically one person um, talking to a computer and then a computer reacting to it, either voice search or voice actions um, or things like that. Um, speech analytics is analyzing conversations between different humans. It could be in a phone call, it could be in a meeting. Um, so we're going to sort of structure the conversation today around those two uh, sets of use cases. Um, so today we're, we're introducing four new beta features, or um, actually yesterday. Um, language ID, multi-channel recognition, speaker diarization, word level confidence. We're, we're going to talk more about each of them. So. Um, We'll, we'll, we'll come back to them, but they all make uh, speech-to-text much, uh, much more useful and, and practical for the various use cases that it solves. Um, so let's focus on the first set of use cases uh, first. So human-computer interaction, when you want to use speech recognition to power sort of different apps or solutions. Um, so there, we, uh, our new feature we're introducing for that is uh, language ID. So, um, like you can see on the right on that screenshot, for Google uh, search, if you, if you use voice search, you can select multiple different languages. So it's not a radio button, it's sort of check boxes, and you can check as many as you want. And then um, when you speak to it, it can understand which language you're talking, and, um, and, and it uh, recognizes the, the transcription in that language. So we're now making that available uh, in the API. You just send multiple language codes. We figure out which, which one is the right one and we return the transcript in that language. Um, it works pretty well, but it's still not perfect. So if you actually know the language code in advance, you're always better off just supplying it. But if you don't know and you have multiple, uh, it's going to do a kind of a best efforts uh, job at, at, at figuring out which language it was. Um, it's currently optimized for voice search and, and voice command. So we, we recommend using it for those kinds of use cases for now. Um, OK. And then for speech analytics, the, the second uh, set of use cases we have, um, that's where the other three features we're, we're introducing today are, are focused. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about those. So, um, you know, speech recognition for, uh, for people that are new to the space, it sounds, you know, uh, pretty similar, right? You, you're, you're trying to recognize what someone said. Um, it, it, it sounds like a, a, a consistent set of problems that you're solving, uh, but can actually be quite different. So if you look at um, recognizing a video versus recognizing a phone call versus uh, recognizing a, a command, so an example of a video could be a basketball game, and uh, you know you could be you could have sounds of the different players that are playing, sounds of the actual basketball bouncing on the ground, sounds of um, <laughs> sorry uh, the TV hosts that are um, sort of interrupting sounds of, um, of, uh, of advertisements that are playing. And uh, you know, the number of speakers could be four or more. It could be even like 20 or 30 or 40, depending on how many advertisements are there. Um, there could be kind of 
lots of uh, background noises, and it could be uh, many hours long. Uh, if you look at phone calls, there it's, it's usually going to be um, you know, a handful of, of speakers, and um, the background there is going to be more static from the phone line or um, you know, compression that's used or um, a narrower sampling rate like 8 kilohertz. And um, it's usually going to be a few minutes long. And then if you look at a command, um, you know, it's usually just one speaker, a few seconds, and there's, you know, there could be a lot of background noise, but it's very, very different in nature. It's going to be other people talking or music or other things playing in the background. Um, sort of the, um, a lot of Google's speech recognition efforts were originally focused on the right-hand side, on uh, sort of voice searches and voice commands. Um, but uh, one of the kind of top requests we got from cloud customers is to solve more of the problems on the, on the left. And um, so that's where, uh, in April, we introduced um, our, new, our new models. So uh, we now have four models that you can choose from, phone call, video, voice commands, and, and default. And um, they each um, you know, are, are tuned to perform really well for that set of use cases. Um, so you know, voice commands uh, is, is tuned to actually filter out all of the other background speakers, right? Because um, it's, uh, it, it's built to recognize one person and it assumes everything else. Uh, that's not the primary speaker, it should be filtered out. Versus our phone call model is actually built to recognize um, you know, everyone that's talking in the phone call, that sounds like they're, they're part of the conversation. Uh, so so they're, they're kind of built with, with different goals. Um, now our, our default model that's been around for, for um, a year or two, that um, we, we, we've gotten consistent customer feedback that it's um, you know, best in the market, it's best, better than any other vendor that's out there, but you know, that was never kind of our aspiration. We, we want it to be not just better than others, but actually good. <laughs> And so um, you know, that's where we, we came out with these new models. What, what we were able to do, uh, the video model is 64% uh, less errors than our default model. That was considered already best in class in the industry. Um, and so you, know, you could argue that it's uh, three times as good as, as uh, anything else that's out there. And then the, the new phone call model is 54% less errors than, than our, our previous model. So um, you know, twice as good as is what existed before. So we're very excited about these new models and uh, uh, you know, all of the new use cases that they open, because now that you can actually do speech recognition for these mediums, that's, that's pretty good. There's all of, this, uh, all of this set of analytics that you can do that you couldn't do before. Um, OK, so today we're, we're introducing two new features in the space. Uh, speaker diarization, and multi-channel recognition. So when you have a conversation between multiple people, um, our recommendation is to record them separately in separate channels. Um, and th there's two reasons for that. One is the accuracy of the transcription is going to be better because it's, even for humans, it's easier to understand each speaker separately versus when they're talking on top of each other. Um, the other reason is, is it's also easier to separate the speakers because you, know, you don't really need to do anything algorithmically. You can just figure out like, who spoke in each channel. Um, so uh, for that, uh, if you do have the speakers separated, that's where we, we're introducing multi-channel recognition that can take an audio file that has multiple channels and uh, separate the different channels and, and, and the speakers there. Um, if, uh, unfortunately, not everyone has that luxury of, of, of having the, the audio file separated into channels, and so if you only have a mono channel and you still want to recognize multiple speakers, that's where um, we're now offering in beta our, our, speaker, our new speaker diarization. It can separate multiple speakers um, in an audio file, um, but it's, it's obviously not going to be perfect, right? It's going uh, to do a, a kind of a, a best efforts job because it's, it's, it's using machine learning and doing it sort of um, v v via program versus uh, external separation. Um, either way, we don't recognize the identity of the person, and uh, we don't store the information beyond the API call. So um, you know, there's nothing here that's related to identity. Um, so, you know, uh, I'm going to show you guys just uh, an example architecture of how th this could be used in speech analytics, and then we'll do a little bit of a code lab. And you'll also see another, uh, another example of it later from one of our guest speakers. Um, so, you know, you could imagine a setup where 
you have audio coming in from a phone gateway. A lot of these phone gateways were built many years ago and don't really have the ability to separate um, audio into different channels, so it comes out as mono. Um, and then it, it would go to cloud speech to text that does the transcription and the diarization. And then um, if you want to do cool things, like for example, analyzing sentiment, you really want to analyze uh, each speaker separately, right? Because um, it, what matters is not the sort of the average of the both, but, but e each one uh, as, they were, as they were talking. Um, so, so you can analyze the customer and the agent separately and then feed each one into some analytics engine like BigQuery and then uh, run different analytics on, on, on that data. Um, so last but not least, one other feature we're, we're introducing is word level confidence. Um, it's been uh, kind of one of our uh, top features from our ISV customers, uh, more sophisticated customers. Uh, what it does, it, it gives you a confidence score up until now, like you can see on the top, you, we had confidence scores that were based on uh, segments. Now you, you actually get confidence scores based on the word, so you can take more action on it, like reprompting the user or, or things like that. Um, okay, so I'm gonna show you guys how to actually um, do this uh, in, in Python. Uh, uh, bear in mind, I'm not a very good Python programmer, <laughs> so uh, let's do this together. Hopefully it will work. If not, uh, if not we'll solve it together. Um, um, actually, before we do that, let, let, let's, let me just show you um, the sample file that we're going to use. So this is the sample file. Let me play it. I hope the audio is connected. Hi. I'd like to buy a Chromecast. I was wondering whether you could help me with that. Certainly. Which color would you like? We have blue, black, and red. Uh, let's go with the black one. Would you like the new Chromecast Ultra model or the regular Chromecast? Regular Chromecast is fine, thank you. Okay, sure. Would you like to ship it regular or express? Express, please. Terrific. It's on the way. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Okay, so that's the audio file. Um, it's transcribing it now. Um, it should be done in a second, and then we're going to see uh, the results in four different models. So, in the in the default model, the phone model, the command model, and video. The the video model is the best one for this file. While it's working, um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go to uh, our docs, and I'm going to go to the speaker diarization rhization example. So it's this one here in Python, and let's view it on GitHub. Okay, there it is. Okay, so let's look, let's look at video so you can see um, uh, this is the transcription. So transcription is reasonably accurate. Most of the time it's good, like here you can see, or uh, let's go with the black one. Would you like new Chromecast or regular Chromecast? Regular Chromecast is fine, thank you. Okay, sure. So you, you, you can see it's um, kind of, it's working most of the time. So let's go to um, our code editor and we'll open this, this code snippet we saw here uh, on GitHub. And um, let's, let's try and run it. Um, so Python beta snippets diarization rhization. Uh, let's see if this works. What this should be doing is the same thing we saw on the web, transcribing it and uh, showing the, res the results as well as the, as the diarization rhization of the results. Um, and then, okay, here it is. So you can see there's all of the words and each word has a speaker tag. Um, okay, so what I wanna show you is how to actually get a stream of text that's different for each speaker and then take that stream of text, do some sentiment analysis and, and print the scores. Um, so before we do that, let's uh, replace the speech file with Better one, D, Haran, 
documents, code, uh, no, I think it's an audio. Um, this is the name of it. Dot wave. Uh, okay, then it's going to open the file. Oh, sorry, this is the this is the wrong one. This is transcriber file with metadata. Um, here it is, diarization. Okay, uh, we're going to use this file. It's going to read the file, then recognition config. Uh, we don't need sample rate; it'll recognize it automatically. Uh, enables diarization. Speaker count, let's also add automatic punctuation. So all we need to do is just add this, and it will start punctuating. Um, and let's also use the video model. Um, so here, there's an example with the model. Let's take this and add video model here. Um, OK. Great. And now, instead of printing all the words, um, let's, um, let's do this. Let's do uh, speaker one transcript and uh, speaker two transcript. Let's initialize them. And then um, uh, let's ask if. Um, basically, this thing uh, equals one. Um, then what we want to do is take this speaker transcript and add to it this word. Um, and let's also add a space. And then if it's the second speaker tag, we want to do the same thing with uh, speaker to transcript. And then <coughs> let's do this. Let's print uh, transcript and uh, let's uh, put in Speaker transcript one. Uh, okay, and then let's do it again with second speaker transcript. Uh, transcript two, transcript one. Okay, let me save. There's probably going to be a bunch of compilation errors, but let's let's work through them together. Um, I edited the right file. We'll see in a second. So what we're expecting is to see transcript one with all of the words that the first person said, and uh, transcript two with all of the words that the second person said. OK, looks like it's working. <laughs> so far, so good, guys. <laughs> um, OK, so now let's look at um, example for analyzing sentiment. So this is using Cloud Natural Language API. I'm going to um, go to this example on GitHub and then copy some code lines here. So first, in terms of imports, it needs all of this import stuff. Um, so let's copy it over and put it here on the top. And we'll see arg parse is duplicate. So we don't need that one. I think we still need the other one. Oh, Oh, sys and six, yeah, they're different. OK, so we have the imports. And now, sorry, this is probably too small. Um, let's copy this piece that does sentiment analysis. Uh, and now we'll paste it in here. And then uh, we already have a client, so let's call this NL client. Um, and NL client here, too. And then we don't need this instance thing. Uh, documents, content. Uh, OK, so let's, we have two different ones. So let's call this one document one and content equals, um, how did we call it? Speaker one transcript. Uh, and then 
document two equals speaker two transcript. Uh, and then we'll have two sentiments. Sentiment one will be NL client analyze sentiment document one. And then sentiment two will be NL client analyze sentiment document two. Okay, and then let's print um, uh, sentiment for first speaker score and magnitude. Uh, and then let's add this sentiment magnitude. Um, and uh, I think this one would be sentiment one. And then we have another one for sentiment two. Second speaker. Okay, let's take, okay, from here, all of this stuff. And paste it here. Okay, so now you can see I'm not like <laughs> faking it. This is real code. Um, <laughs> okay, transcript one, transcript two, and there's the score, guys. <laughs> cool, so this is a good example. If I can do it, really anyone can do it. <laughs> I, uh, I, I uh, really, um, uh, you know, welcome you all to try it and combine it with whatever other APIs you want. Um, you know, and, and we, we, we definitely look to forward to hearing your feedback about all these new features. We want to make them better over time, so the more feedback you can share, the better. Um, okay, so with that, let me transition over uh, to Nikolai from LogMeIn that's going to take it from here. Um, my name is Nikolai Avrionov. I'm the lead architect for the GoTo uh, meeting, GoToWebinar, the collaboration products in LogMeIn. And every month, millions of customers rely on our products to run their day to join jobs. As you can see, we have a, a lot of audio minutes, a lot of meetings. And early on, we realized that the meetings have value before and after. Customers need these meetings to uh, write notes, to reference them f further, uh, to, to run their business. And what we did is we introduced recordings. And uh, after, after we introduced recording, we started to look at how to make these recordings even more useful. And the obvious step was to add uh, transcription. So we started to look for a transcription provider. And we, we selected Google, Google Speech Text. I'm going to talk about what was the process that we went through to select Google. And, but first, I'm going to show you what I have as a, as a UI. So this is, this is after meeting, you get this. Uh, a page where you can share the results of your meeting. And we have a fully searchable UI that you can search every participant, everything that they said, when they said it, you can click on certain pieces. So you don't have to uh, anymore uh, wait for the entire meeting and watch it. So let's move to a demo. This was a meeting that Dan and I had a few weeks ago just to uh, go over a few things. And so, so let's say we, we, looked for, we discussed things like a conference, web conferencing. So you can see I can find every instance of the word conference in the meeting, I can, and I can just replay it from here, so I don't have to wait for, for, the, for that portion. Only in English, and also the realization of... Yeah, so we, we're discussing this exact uh, uh, presentation. So how, what was the process for us to uh, select a speech-to-text provider? Uh, we, we were not Google client at that time. We looked at all the major speech-to-text providers. We built our own use cases specifically for what we do because we wanted to have the best provider for our use case. And what we selected is the Google uh, Video API. We actually started to work with them when the API was still in beta. And we released uh, our feature one month after uh, the Google Video API went in, into production. Um, so the, the, the takeaway from here is really, really test and find the best, uh, the best provider for yourself. You, you see these numbers that providers usually have uh, accuracy, but it's important what works for you. Uh, how, how it's implemented. Uh, 
Uh, we am, we, before that, we are mostly Amazon shop, so we have uh, our real-time infrastructure on Amazon or on premise, and we have to connect our own infrastructure with, with Google. So currently, we have a, a VPC between us and Google, and uh, we combine several data sources. We take all the events that happen in a meeting, when somebody speaks, when, when he stops and st starts, the video streams, we send the audio for Google to transcription, and the combined result is what you saw on the screen. We can, uh, we can identify every speaker to a word, and we can click on that word and play from there. Uh, I'm showing you a few code samples, probably nothing surprising for you. One thing that uh, uh, we, we, we decided is to, to build a set of services, transcription, parsing of the transcripts as a services, so we can uh, change, change the transcription model, ch even change the provider if we have to uh, support multiple transcription results. So, so we have this layer between us and the providers that uh, we can s switch them at any time if we have to. So the code samples are pretty easy. One thing that I want to uh, emphasize is that it's really important to handle all the uh, error cases because sometimes uh, for something like speech to text, you can see way more errors than uh, something like a regular, regular product. Uh, you have, a, you have a recording that nobody speaks or they start and stop really quickly. So you can, initially you'll see a lot of problems that are not problem with the speech to, uh, speech to text API, but just how the customers use the product. Okay, um, we can see the, the results were really positive. We are getting a lot of, a lot, uh, on Twitter, on other channels, we are getting a lot of uh, positive uh, feedback from customers, we saw that the, the usage of the product is actually going up because customers are relying on the, on the meeting to be recorded and transcribed. So sometimes they tell us that they don't even need to take notes anymore. They know that uh, this is recorded for them and they just go and review what people said. Uh, what we're looking in the future, we're continuing to work with Dan and his team uh, better accuracy for accents. When we started to, to test it, it works very well for uh, uh, a native speaker, uh, native speakers, but it really has a problem with English with different accents. Uh, even uh, uh, accents like Irish were uh, uh, not uh, transcribed as well as, as English. So we, we're, working, we're working forward for that. Uh, Multi-language support, that's obvious. We support 16 languages. We want uh, to introduce all the languages to the product. And uh, speaker diarization, this is very important for us because a lot of meetings happen from a conference room and we cannot separate the speakers using just our infrastructure. We have to use the diarization. We started to experiment. We've been using the beta. Uh, and we, again, we're applying the same approach. We're going to build our own test cases, uh, test it, and understand what works better for us. Thank you. Thank you, guys. How you doing? Uh, my name is Bob McKinney. I'm a uh, speech uh, analytics expert. I want to talk to you today about a really exciting project that I worked on for the last year. Uh, it's around retail. Uh, basically, if you if you ever worked in retail, you understand that retail stores get a lot of phone calls from uh, price and availability to just checking warranty, things like that. So one of the things that, uh, one of the projects that I worked on over the last year, I uh, worked for two national brands working on a, a year-long project. Uh, we analyzed over 360,000 uh, retail store calls, which uh, translates to about a million minutes processed. The goal of the project was to focus on uh, phone call conversion. And this is a big deal because if you use AdWords or, or Bing ads or any kind of the, any ads out there that have uh, location extensions on them or a click to call or Google My Business ads, uh, uh, you really want to be able to track those, those the, you know, the performance of those ads. And that was the, the focus of the project to say, hey, what is the conversion of those, those calls? So using speech and text um, uh, APIs from Google, uh, speaker diarization, models, enhanced models, the phone uh, model is the, the model I ended up picking, um, natural language processing for sentiment analysis, entity analysis, and then uh, ultimately to connect it all back to the uh, internal system of the two brands um, using uh, the internal messaging bus. Uh, Google has a pretty good version of this, PubSub, but in this case you actually used uh, uh, Microsoft BizTalk. But uh, just a little bit about the architecture here. Um, 
the company, the partner I decided to go with for, uh, for encapsulation of the calls, uh, Dialogue Tech, company out of Chicago, great company. Uh, basically what happened is a uh, customer would call uh, the store and Dialogue Tech would post a, a, uh, uh, do a post call to a cloud function that would trigger off a number of events. One of those events being download the, the WAV file from Dialogue Tech into the uh, Google Cloud Storage, which allowed you to do all the things that uh, uh, Dan showed you in the demo. Uh, you can call that cloud storage bucket from speech to text, natural language processing, and a bunch of other places. Uh, so working through that demo, um, some of the things we were looking for on the output of that in BigQuery were fuzzy string matching, um, n-grams, just the, the frequency of words, so demand over time. So if, if a particular product, you can watch the demand over a year period to say, hey, is it ramping during this season or that season or is it, uh, is it declining? And that's a really big deal, um, uh, you know, using BigQuery and Python uh, and some of the packages in Python allowed us to do that. Uh, the biggest thing, though, the, that, that helped out the most was definitely speaker diarization uh, which allowed us to, to separate out the, um, the customer from the, the associate at the store. And this allowed us to do a lot of things from, from A-B testing on the, the associate side for training and then uh, uh, n-grams and the uh, fuzzy text uh, matching on the customer side. So we could say, hey, if they, you know, in this particular case, in this call, we're looking for phone calls where they mention the iPhone 7 and whether or not uh, it was a broken screen or needed a battery replacement. In this case, we wanted to say, hey, the broken screen, we add that to our list for frequency for n-grams, and then we can also go down through that, uh, using that call, caller ID, and match it against the internal system using that message bus to say, hey, did that phone call actually convert into a, into a sale? Um, and then if you're getting you know, thousands and thousands of calls a day, um, you can actually uh, figure out the value of those phone calls based on that conversion rate, which uh, is, is, I think, pretty revolutionary. So um, I encourage you know anybody that has that kind of uh, you know a problem just to keep working through these APIs and and, uh, and you'll find a solution. Uh, some of the other things that uh, that we could do around that is the entity and sentiment analysis. So in this case, you can see that the the consumer good being an iPhone 7, and you can see the sentiment score is a negative uh, 0.4. Uh, which is which is negative, right? Because they broke the screen. They're probably unhappy about that, and they're just trying to get it repaired. Um, and and you can see that in the the entity and sentiment analysis. Uh, why we why we uh, why we choose uh, you know why we chose uh, Google Cloud to speech. Um, uh, the accuracy of the transcription with phone models, uh, it was, you know, we benchmarked, we benchmarked against, uh, you know, some of the major competitors out there, uh, Amazon, Watson, um, IBM, uh, IBM Watson, and uh, uh, the Microsoft products, and we just found consistently that the transcri tran transcription accuracy uh, from the Google uh, text-to-speech or in speech to text was a lot it's significantly better than the other um, the other options out there. Uh, the diarization reliability, um, just being able to uh, distinguish between uh, the users uh, was a big deal for us, right? So between the the associate and the uh, um, and the customer, that way we could do training for the for the the associate, and then we could do conversion on the customer. Uh, ease of use. Uh, we had a lot of a uh, lot of services already built for um, using Google Cloud services, um, so it was really easy to be able to connect them all using you know virtual private network between um, between the Google Cloud platform and and the internal network and connected to BigQuery and Cloud Functions. So all that all that uh, you know combined made it a no brainer to go with the uh, the Google Cloud uh, speech to text uh, product. So I think I'm going to hand it over to uh, Mahesh, and he's going to talk a little bit about uh, what he's working on. Thanks, Bob. Uh, I'm Mahesh Balaji. I lead the Cognitive Computing and Data Sciences Lab at uh, Cognizant. Cognizant is a leading IT service provider, helps clients across three lines of services, one of which is digital operations. Among other things uh, that we do in digital operations, we also maintain and manage service text for customers, uh, which brings us to the case today I'm going to talk about today. Um, 
late in Q2 of last year, uh, I was actually associated with this engagement. Uh, client is a retail chain uh, based out of Australia, New Zealand region. The typical challenges were there was pretty high call volumes, there was long wait times. Primarily it's a 24 by 7 by 365 setup where the concurrent calls were average around 20, day peaks would hit high 25s, season peaks would hit anywhere from 45 to 50, right? So we were creating on an average 75,000 tickets, unique ones, and if you add the repeat calls and the overlaps, we were hitting 100K easy. And uh, we had around 1,500 scenarios, or cases if you want to say, that we covered as part of this engagement, and because of which, it took a lot of time to onboard, even though we bucketed common scenarios and trained agents accordingly. It did take a lot of time for us, and attrition was not helping the situation. So it, it was fully human dependent, so there was a very high cost to it. And because of all this, our CSAT score was pretty average, right? So giving a, a view of the process flow itself. Users across 3,000 stores call in from, for issues like printer cartridge not working to freezer is broken, please tell me what to do. That gets to the IVR system. IVR system forwards that to the agent, whoever is free. Agent listens to it, validates the user's request first, and then understands the context and provides the response. That's, that was the, uh, and the user and the agent kind of did most of the work there. So fast forwarding what we did, we still had the human, but he was actually handling only the exceptions, right? We replaced the whole human handling all of it with a bunch of boxes, right? So now the user calls in. From a user perspective, there's absolutely no change. He still calls in a toll-free number that still hits the same IVR. Instead of going to the agent, it actually goes to the integration framework, which is the IFX uh, abbreviated there. That does the orchestration going forward. So we send that text to Google services, get the voice clip transcribed to text, forward that to dialogue flow, match the intent, get the response, put it back into speech, and give it back to the client. And this flow keeps going back and forth till the system feels that it has to either escalate it out or the issue is resolved. Right? So once we put this in place, we immediately saw significant benefits. The average call time dropped from four minutes to one minute, and because of that, the call wait time came down by 20% straight. Right? The human is still there in the loop, but he's actually handling the exceptions. He's not doing bulk of the work. And because of that, the overall operational costs came down, and uh, the quality of service was consistent and better. The CSAT score by default jumped up. Right? So if I was going at 2x speed, there's a clock running here, and I don't have time, I still have to give you guys some Q&A time. Right? So that's all Dan's problem, not mine. And, uh, what did we learn from all this? I thought this is more important. This is where I, I want to probably spend time than the previous uh, context, right? So don't bother pre-processing the audio. We went through the exercise of doing that, right? So as engineers, we jump into the conclusion that we have to apply filters for noise reduction. We have to do that, do this. We don't have to do that. So as a matter of fact, it is counterproductive. So if you apply a lot of uh, digital signal processing algorithms upfront, the output confidence score is less. That's, that's what we figured out. So if you have a proper audio clip, send it because the API already does most of that work for you guys, right? And uh, of course, the second one was the phrase hint. So this helped us a lot in improving the overall score, given the fact that it can take up to 500 words, and if it's domain specific, it did a phenomenal job of making sure the text gets transcribed to the most accuracy possible. And uh, the format, sampling, and encoding, I would like to add the model also here now that there's three new models being introduced. It's very important. When we started off, again, the engineering hat kind of comes in and we say MP4 is a better format, it's compressed, we kind of can move data around quicker and all that, but that's a lossy format, right? You are better off compromising on, on certain items and pick a lossless format and, and lossless encoding so that the output quality, the final intention of having the audio clip transformed into text is better. So that's what I would actually suggest. And I'm super excited about the next one, which is the word level confidence, specifically the, uh, the case I was talking to you about. So it helps big time, right? Most of the conversations are short, and you don't have to do a full sentence or a, or a phrase uh, uh, confidence. You can go by the confidence given by the word, or you can pick and choose the combination to make sure the dialogue or the conversation goes forward. Right? Of course, uh, all the new things 
that got introduced does give a very, very natural interaction between the uh, user. It is not IVR-ish anymore, and that's primarily a big difference if, if you are counting the CSAT scores and interacting. So if you are ever on the other side and if you actually get an IVR-ish response, I'm sure all of us hate that, right? So that definitely has come down with the new set of uh, uh, modules that's been introduced by Google.